Hello, I'm Matthew from Run Repeat, and this morning I'm going to be reviewing the Under Armour Hover Infinite Shoe. So essentially, in this shoe, Under Armour have come out to challenge the established brands and some really well-loved shoes, such as the Brooks Ghost and the 1080 from New Balance, which deliver a plush, cushioned ride, which is an everyday shoe for many, and uh, for others, uh, a shoe for those longer or recovery runs. Plot spoiler, Under Armour are new to the business, but they really have delivered a shoe that will stand up alongside these established brands. So a quicker overview of the shoe, as I say, it is a well cushioned um, daily shoe. It comes in at 305 grams for the men's shoe, 248 grams for the ladies shoe. So that is comparable to similar shoes from uh, other brands. Um, it's got an eight mil drop, it comes in some uh, grey colours and different colourways and what have you. And it also comes with a built-in sensor that's inside the, uh, the right shoe and will track cadence, distance and what have you without the need for a GPS watch or a link to a phone. So moving on to the construction, the upper is very typical of most of the uh, running shoes, the road running shoes, especially you'll find today. It's a double layer of engineered mesh around the front, very lightweight, breathable, not much support in there, but this is a neutral shoe. Uh, so you shouldn't be, you shouldn't find that too much of an issue if that's the kind of shoe you're looking for. There's a lot of reflective panels, which is really useful. I've just finished a, a morning run in the dark and it is uh, great to see how much reflection you get from these as car headlights pick up the shoes while you're running. Um, a small reinforced uh, rubberized uh, toe bumper here and moving backwards, we've got a very cushioned tongue, quite light uh, cushioning here. It, it does sit very nicely, keeps you comfortable, and it means you don't have to lace the uh, laces too tightly, uh, which is great for those longer, easy runs. Moving further back, a bit more reinforced around the heel, as you'd expect, fairly strengthened, but again, cushioned on the inside, so it feels comfortable. You will notice the rear part comes up a little bit higher on the Achilles, but certainly I found no irritation and it is very comfortable essentially. So overall, a fairly typical upper, lightweight, breathable and a reasonably wide toe box. So now we come on to the midsole, which is the make and break of any running shoe. Every manufacturer has developed their own form of foam, uh, which has a different balance of comfort, responsiveness, energy return, all of those other different things you've heard of. Under Armour have developed hover foam. Initially very lightweight and cushioned foam, but the issue they had was it didn't provide any energy return. If you imagine landing on a marshmallow, it can be extremely uh, comfortable and give you a lot of cushioning, but you're not gonna get a lot of spring from it. The answer Under Armour came up with was to develop an energy web, uh, which you can see with this honeycomb coloring around and this almost external foam on the midsole, which holds in that hover foam. And it means that once you've landed and it's cushioned you, that will hold it and give you an energy return. So what it provides is a really cushioned landing, a smooth transition, and actually a fairly springy takeoff. In that sense, it's really working. And I found it very comparable to uh, my previous kind of easy daily cushion road running shoe, which was the Brooks Ghost. So in that sense, as a newcomer to the market, they really seem to have done a great job with this uh, midsole hover foam. So now we move on to the outsole of the shoe and here Under Armour have uh, developed and delivered uh, a really versatile outsole. The front of the shoe, you've got these lateral interlocking pods running from side to side in the shoe. Um, the gaps in between where the foam's exposed gives you great flexibility, uh, which again gives you a nice springy takeoff um, and great movement. As we move around the back, uh, the interlocking pods continue around the outside with a high abrasion uh, form of uh, rubber on this uh, heel landing zone to provide greater durability in this high wear area. Overall, I found it to be a really versatile sole. It works really well for road running, all kind of weathers, um, wet, dry and what have you. But also my last long run at the weekend took me along 20 miles along the coast, which incorporated tarmac, light trail, gravel, 
and a bit of sand and rock as well. And this shoe and the outsole in particular really stood up to it and took it in its stride, uh, no problem at all. Um, I've had, done just over 200 miles in the shoe so far on the road um, and I have noticed some wear on the outside here. So it is wearing fairly thin there. My guess is I'll probably get another couple of hundred miles out of them, which will give them say 400 miles, uh, which is a good number of miles for shoe, but no better than uh, I might expect from any other shoe. So don't expect it necessarily to go on forever, but it is pretty comparable to other brands. Another thing to mention is the sensor that's built into the right shoe. It's really easy to pair with your phone once you get the shoes. Just download the Under Armour Map My Run app and it'll talk you through the pairing of the shoes. Thereafter, every time you pop the shoes on and go for the run, it'll measure distance, speed, pace, cadence and various other metrics. When you've finished your run or at any time in the future, if you want to sync the shoes with the Map My Run app, then you can see a down, uh, downloaded um, information on that run, providing all those metrics to you. According to Under Armour, the sensor has enough battery life to outlast the shoes, so you shouldn't have any issues with that. So how about performance? Put my cards on the table for the last few years, I've always had in my shoe rotation, either a pair of uh, Brooks Ghost or New Balance 1080 shoes, which I'll, I can put on when I want a long run, an easy run, a steady run, or just one of those runs where I want to look after my feet and just plod along without worrying too much. I was just about to uh, buy a new pair of Brooks Ghost when I had the opportunity to test these. And to be honest, they're absolutely lived up to everything I'd have expected from the Ghost. They provide the cushioning, they provide the comfort on the feet for everything from a, a short 5K run through to a long 20 odd mile uh, training run. There's every chance I'll be wearing these. Uh, I've also used them on long intervals and hill sprints as well. So for the last six weeks, pretty well every time I've uh, gone out on the roads, this is the pair of shoes I've picked up. Now, to be honest, I didn't expect to like this shoe. Under Armour are well known in the rugby market and they've come into the fitness market in the last couple of years, especially with their tie-ins with people like Anthony Joshua. But it often takes uh, quite a long time for brands to establish and deliver a really good running shoe. Under Armour, I've managed it. Does everything, as I say, that I expect from this kind of shoe? It just leaves me with one dilemma. Once this shoe wears out, do I buy another pair of these or do I go back to the Brooks Ghost? If you're looking for a one-size-fits-all daily trainer that'll pretty well do everything, this could be the right shoe for you. If you've got a number of shoes in your rotation and you're looking for that comfortable shoe for those easy runs or those long runs that aren't going to fatigue the legs, again, this could be the shoe for you. Whatever your particular circumstances are in, I would certainly recommend the Under Armour Hover Infinite Shoe. For more information, uh, do go to runrepeat.com where you'll find more detailed reviews and information about this shoe and where, to, where you can actually pick it up. Thanks for listening.